Who doesn't want an abundant life? You know, I think everybody wants an abundant life. Uh, everyone wants more than they have most of the time. You know, when God called man and woman uh, after he created them and put them in the garden, he placed them there. His intent wasn't just to leave them there for a short period of time. His intent was to leave them there forever in that wonderful garden uh, to be cared for by him and, and everything that he had placed in there. Uh, he gave them an abundant life. Uh, but they, like so many people today, were not content with what they had. They wanted more, and they wanted it uh, to the tune that they gave in to temptation when they were tempted by Satan. Uh, it just didn't quite work out for them the way that God wanted them to, to act, which means that God will not make us live in a way that pleases Him. We have to choose to do that ourselves. They disobeyed God, they sinned, and that sin separated them from God. As a result, God drove them from that garden. He drove them from the place that he created, that paradise that he created, and was going to care for them forever. Uh, they lost the abundant life that, that God had created for them. You know, suppose for a minute that I could offer you an abundant life. I mean, in hindsight, would Adam and Eve have made better decisions? I think maybe they would have, you know, but uh, we, like them, can't go back and redo mistakes, can't go back and, and redo past, but suppose that I could offer you an abundant life uh, that's guaranteed to give you joy greater than anything that you've ever known. Uh, would you be interested? You know, a lot of people could care less uh, about anything and any promise. Of course, I can't myself give that to you. Uh, there's no way that I can give it to you. Uh, but Jesus can, and he does. Uh, in John 10 and verse 10, uh, it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill uh, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Of course, the words of our Lord and Savior did not just pertain to this earthly life. Uh, he wants us to have a good life here, but He wants to give us that abundant life, that, that life that is so much more than, than what we could ever experience here. Uh, Jesus offers it, uh, not only by His sacrificial death, but by His teachings and His Word. If we look at John 15 and verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. God doesn't want us to be miserable as Christians. He doesn't. He wants us to be joyful. He wants us to live as good uh, Christian people and, and have an abundant life. Through His teachings then we can learn the secrets of an abundant life. It seems that this life is elusive to a lot of people. Uh, I fear that the main reason is that they leave God out of their lives and so they therefore miss the abundant life that they could have uh, by the teachings of Christ. Uh, one of those lessons comes from uh, the book of John. Uh, he pictures himself as uh, at the vine and it describes uh, his disciples as the branches. We know that when a vine grows it puts out different stems and different leaves and branches and Christ uh, gave us a glimpse about that in, in, in a lot. John 15 uh, beginning with verse 1 he says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, and it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. People that don't have God in their lives, 
They can't really have that abundant life. They can't really have and achieve the joy that God would have us because they're without God. The same as for us today. It says, for without me you can do nothing. We can't truly have the life that God wants for us without Him, without His Son. Uh, according to this lesson, as branches, we're to bear fruit. Uh, and in turn, this leads us to... Uh, the first of several secrets, if you will. It's really not secrets because they've been revealed to us uh, now that we have the Word. Uh, the secret of living is, is bearing fruit. Do you think God would have us to set on, be as a, as a knot on a log and just sit there and never do anything? No, I guess a knot on a log has a purpose, but that's not our purpose. Our purpose is to be good Christian, to share that fruit, to bear fruit. Uh, there's different fruits that we can bear. We all don't bear the same fruit, and, as there's different talents that everyone has. So naturally, we bear different fruit. You know, you don't see pears growing on an apple tree or peaches growing on an apple tree. It's different fruits. We're all different, and we have different fruit that we can, uh, can bear. Uh, one of the best fruits, I think, as disciples of Christ that we can bear is by producing another disciple. Our mission as followers of God, as Christians, are to carry the gospel to all nations. It's because God loves the souls of mankind. He created them. He created them in His image. He loves their souls. He doesn't want them to be lost. The most important thing is that we share the knowledge of the gospel with them that in hopes that they'll be obedient to it and that they will become a disciple, a follower of Him. If we can help someone do that and lead them in that direction, what a wonderful way to bear fruit. Uh, to help another disciple, help someone become a disciple. Paul did this. He talks about it in Romans 15. Jesus did it, uh, certainly, as he walked this earth. Uh, so if, if the vine did this himself, should not we do the same? Absolutely. Uh, he's the best teacher, the greatest teacher that's ever been. Uh, his illustration, his example was that we do as he did and work in that direction. Another fruit is uh, the developing of, of Christ-like character. Uh, I, I don't think it's funny, but you know we describe Christ as being Christ-like. He, he is Christ. He couldn't be anything but Christ-like. As God couldn't be anything but God, an honest, loving uh, God. Uh, developing a Christ-like character doesn't happen overnight. It takes uh, a lot of practice, a lot of living, a lot of, of enduring. Uh, and in doing that, we develop certain spirits, if you will, uh, the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5, uh, 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, uh, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And have put on the new man uh, according which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. If we're going to develop these fruits of the Spirit, how do we do it? Well, it's in the knowledge and the image of Him that created us through our knowledge and the image of God of what's portrayed. Uh, Jesus told His disciples, if you want to see the Father, look at me. Uh, His example was what God would have us to do and have us to live. Uh, another fruit is praising God and giving thanks. How often do you thank God for the good things in your life? We ought to thank God daily for the good things in our life. I know we all face challenges and we all have bad things in our life, but the good outweigh the bad by far. By far they outweigh. And we need to thank God every day uh, for what He's given us and, and how He's blessed us. Hebrews 13 and verse 15 says, By Him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. How often do we thank God for the good blessings and, and the things that He does for us? We should. Uh, it's a development of, of possessing these 
fruits of the Spirit. Uh, there's different kinds of fruits that, that we can bear. But how does that in itself make for a better life, make for an abundant life? Well, we said earlier that one of the best fruits that you could, could possess and have was your initiative and involvement in helping someone obey the gospel, someone be added to the Lord's church. Uh, soul winning, if you want to put a title on it, soul winning. Uh, I don't think there's anything better than working towards having someone believe and obey the gospel and realizing it and being uh, become a child of God. Uh, John, 3 John 4 uh, says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Didn't give John any greater value than to know that what he taught and what they believed in and their faith was in that they walked and continued in that being the truth of God uh, Paul's uh, converts in Thessalonica were his pride and joy uh, 1 Thessalonians 2 19 and 20 says for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming for ye are our glory our, our glory and joy uh, the Christians, those that had been faithful, that had obeyed the gospel, that he had encouraged and taught, and that those that followed in his footsteps had continued to do and added uh, in their studies and added to where they could hear the word of God and be obedient to it, gave him no greater joy than to hear that another disciple uh, was added unto the Lord's church. Uh, you know, those involved in... in helping win and confirm souls for Christ, find joy as, as they see their fruits and labors. There's a lot of things that we can do, and, and that we, we can see results. And sometimes we get discouraged if we work at that and don't see results real quick. Uh, you know, you work with someone and, and they don't seem to devote their attention and open their heart to it immediately, and sometimes we... We give up, or sometimes we go to someone else. Uh, there's great joy in working and sharing uh, God's Word with people. Uh, there is great joy in seeing the fruits of our labor, no doubt about it, but if we don't see it, we shouldn't stop. We should continue it. Uh, they're never in vain. Uh, the Lord's work is never in vain. There's great happiness for those uh, as well who help others uh, there's different ways that we can help others uh, soon as sometimes we talk about helping someone what comes to mind is, is people say well uh, we don't have much of a benevolence budget we only have so much and we can only help so much well helping others doesn't always have to do with money Helping others may be being able to talk to people, may be able to be there and encourage people. Uh, give of your time, give of your talents, uh, give of your heart. It doesn't always have to be about money. Uh, Acts 20 and verse 35 says it's more blessed to give than to receive. No matter what it is, whether it's of your heart, your time, uh, money, uh, don't consider it in vain that, that you do these things. Consider it a gift and an opportunity uh, and an example to be like our Lord and Savior. You know, we've great assurance, too, for those who develop a Christ-like character. You know, we look at ourselves and we gauge ourselves and then what we learn and study and read in the Bible as to how faithful or how good a Christian that we are. We know our hearts. We know what's inside of us. So we can automatically read the Word of God and we can say, wow, uh, I have a hard time doing that or I really fall short in that area. Or, I'm good on this thing, but I need to work on this. Uh, and that's the thing about each one of us doing personal examination. Can I do a personal examination for you? Absolutely not, because I don't know your heart. I don't know your feelings toward one thing or another. But... Uh, 
We have great assurance when we develop this Christ-like character, Romans 8 and 1 says, therefore, no more cond condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. The more we study and the more we learn that God loves us and God forgives us, and if we walk within the, the Word of God and live our lives according, then we have no condemnation. Do you think that would give you a, an opportunity to have a better assurance and live life, uh, uh, have a more joyful life while you're here? If it doesn't, something's wrong. Uh, knowing that uh, your God's child should give you all of the, the assurance that you ever need. Second uh, Peter chapter 1, we're told that those who develop these fruits and graces, these fruits of the Spirit and graces, uh, have the assurance of an abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom of God. So those who love indeed and in trust have an assurance of a better life. Uh, if we don't do it, you know, we need to look at ourselves and say, hey, where do I need to grow as a Christian? What do I need to do to improve my life to have a better, more abundant life? I certainly believe that those who possess an attitude of, of gratitude will have a peace about them that, that abounds. You know, there's certain people that never get excited about anything. There's certain people that never uh, seem thankful for anything. And then there's those people that are just thankful for everything. Uh, be one of those people that look around that, that's thankful to God for everything that you have. You're thankful for another day. You're thankful for your life. You're thankful for uh, the gift that, that God has given us for the hope of eternal life. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So in other words, God will guard our hearts, He'll guard our minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, so the secret of living is, is bearing fruit. Uh, and this abundant life is available to all who will diligently seek God and to seek uh, to bear fruit in their lives for God through Jesus Christ. Is there a secret to bearing fruit? You know, people seem like they think there's a big secret because they don't think that they could bear fruit or they don't think that they could do anything that might be worthy to say, hey, this is bearing fruit for God. Uh, yeah, there is a secret to bearing fruit. Uh, do you know what it is? Possessing love. Uh, the love of God. Matthew 22, you know, it, 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 Jesus was questioned uh, about what's the greatest of the two commands. And you remember what those were? Love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And they said, on these two commandments hinge all the commands. And both of those commandments are about the love, about love. Uh, you've heard the old saying that love conquers all. Well, it certainly goes a long ways in, in doing the will of God. And you must have that love for God. You must have that love for one another. You must have that love and desire to do God's work in order to have an abundant life. But God will bless you with it if you possess that love. Uh, God loves us all. He provided a way for us uh, out of love. And you talk about love, you think, how could someone give their only child for someone that was terrible, someone that was horrible, someone that would ultimately take his life. Would you as a parent give your own life for your child? I suspect that most would. Uh, if you ask them, would you give your life for a murderer? Uh, there may be some reservations. Uh, but would you give your life for your child? Absolutely. Uh, God loves us all. He provided a way for us. The love that He had was so great that He gave His Son to die even for the murderer. It's not something that we would even want to think about doing. John 15, 13 says, Greater love than no, uh, hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friend. Are you a friend of God? That's what it boils down to. No better love than that it is for God to lay down His life for His friend. If you're His friend, whew, 
you've got all the love that God can send in your way. But if you're not, uh, you're in need. Jesus loves you. He gave his life for you so that, that you could live for no other reason. He didn't give his life for any other reason except that you could have life and that you could have it more abundantly. God wanted you to have a great life. He wanted you to have a good life here. But most of all, he wanted you to have an abundant life with him one day. And he's the only way that you can have it. God gave us that way. Uh, because he wants us to be with him forever. We have a soul. He created us in his image. Uh, he, he wants not only the best life while we're here, but the best life ever possible. Do you remember when Jesus was speaking to the Sadducees in, in uh, Matthew chapter 22? It, they were attempting to trip him up uh, about the resurrection, and they were talking to him about uh, if a brother died that had no children, uh, the wife was passed down to the next oldest brother, and then uh, the scenario kept going through through all of the brothers, and they were trying to, uh, after seven brothers, trip him up and say, well, if there really is a re resurrection, if there really is an abundant life, is there uh, that's as good as what you're teaching and, and preaching, whose wife is this woman going to be after seven brothers have been married to her? Uh, Jesus said unto them, You err not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. I fear there's a lot of people that err today not knowing the Scriptures and not knowing the power of God. You know, we're to study. We're to study to show ourselves approved. We're to study to be the best that we can be to live a life that God would have us to live. We must know and study the scriptures to know what God expects of us. You know, we study uh, in case people talk to us and want to know, hey, why do you do this? Why do you live the life that you do? Why do you not do this? Uh, we study the Bible so that we can be able to give a defense on what we believe and where our faith lies. Uh, we build our faith on, on what God says and what God's Word says. But uh, Jesus went on to tell those Sadducees concerning the woman that, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. Now, I don't know if you actually have thought about that and about what that says. Uh, that last point, it says, but are as the angels of God. We're not only God's chosen people when we uh, have faith and and live this wonderful life here and have that hope of, of a wonderful life in heaven. We're more than just mortal men and mortal women, but we are as the angels. It didn't say that we were angels, but he says you're as the angels, uh, like as an angel of God. Have you ever thought about being like an angel? You know, I don't know what, how realm that the angels play and in God's kingdom today I have no idea but I know God created them and, and he loved them as he created us but one day we're going to be with him if we're faithful and uh, we get through this life and we're going to have a more abundant life than we've ever thought about in this one it exists it's real it's not something that's just dreamt about it's something that actually exists it's real today uh, it was preached of when the church started as being at hand. It certainly is at hand today. It's, it's waiting on, on us. And when we leave this life, if you're a Christian, to have that more abundant life. Uh, I do hope you're a Christian today. And I hope uh, that you have that wonderful hope of, of an even more abundant life when you leave this one. But, you know, not everyone does. <laughs> Not everyone has a wonderful life here. Not everyone has, has the hope of an even better abundant life when they leave this physical one. God says you can. You can have that hope by hearing and believing and repenting, confessing Christ and being baptized for the remission of sin, the forgiveness of sins. You know, you can have that hope of an abundant life. No matter whatever happens in this life, you'll always have that one which is way more abundant than this one could ever be. You know, when, you, when it comes down to it, 
uh, no matter what you have here, no matter what you've done here, how much of it are you going to take with you? About that much. You know, about that much. Uh, you're going to leave as you were born with nothing, naked. Uh, you came in, you'll go out that way. Uh, all you've worked for to obtain in your life is going to go to someone else. None of it is going to be taken with you. No matter what they bury with you or or where they put you, you're not going to be able to take it with you. It's years later, they can dig it up as they do the tombs today, and they find all of this stuff there. It didn't go anywhere. It stayed right there where they put it. Uh, and so will this world. It, it'll, the things in it will, will remain for someone else when we leave, and it'll not go with us. But you know what will go with us? That wonderful hope of a more abundant life. Only God can give it through his dear son. I hope if you're not a Christian that you'd consider becoming one. And if you are a Christian and maybe have faltered and, and fallen away, that you'd want to renew that spiritual walk with God today. If you have a need as we stand and sing this song of encouragement, please use it as an invitation to the Lord. Days are filled with sorrow and pain.